I just want to show a little visual representation of what's exactly going on here. And uh, I suppose this is an example of what the scientist might have done uh, when he's got his data. If he's recorded 20 data points here, he might put them in what we call a scatter plot with all these dots here. And he might be saying, hmm, I've got all this information, but I want to predict what's going to happen when I have a temperature of 19 degrees. I don't have that in my 20 data points. So I'll create what we call a uh, regression line, which is a line which is meant to fit through as closely as possible these data points. It doesn't go through all of them exactly, but it fits as closely as possible, or the least distance this is from the points there. And then what I can do is I can use this now to predict if I want to go to 19 degrees, for example. So remember, the x value is 19, the first one there. I get my finger just right, freeze it right there. You can see it says 29.036. And so that's the idea with this, that we can actually use this to predict, okay, within these values, even though I don't have that value itself, but if we were to get a temperature of 19 degrees, how many chirps can I expect there? And I suppose a bit of a takeaway from this is that it seems like just like a really hard question that Nessa has put in. And it is, right, to be fair. But I suppose we're trying to develop these problem-solving skills in students now that it's not just about uh, giving the information piece by piece, but if you collected a whole heap of data, uh, what could we do with that? How can we interpret that? And that's, I suppose, one of the skills we want students to be leaving uh, with when they finish mathematics in school. Not just memorizing formulas and things like that, but problem solving and deciphering information uh, is something that is really valuable uh, in any stage of life in your learning.